Welcome back everybody, I'm Dexter with Current Connected. About a year ago, EG4 revolutionized safety in off-grid and on-grid power systems with their complete rapid shutdown technology. Now it's been about a year since this came out, but it's still very clear to me that a lot of you guys don't know about this. So in today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive in. On the bench today, we have a 12K PV inverter. This is very similar to the 18K PV and one of the 48 volt EG4 LL-S batteries. Now this works with just about every EG4 inverter and all of the EG4 batteries now have this functionality. And it's very cool because it's not just for use with EG4 inverters. We're also gonna show you toward the end of the video how you can use this with any brand inverter. Let's jump in. There are two different ways to initiate the rapid shutdown. If you're using one of the EG4 inverters, on the left-hand side of the inverter, there is a rapid shutdown button that you can press, and that initiates the shutdown. If your system is installed somewhere like in a shed or garage where the inverter is indoors, we can wire in an external shutdown, and this can be close to where like your electrical meter is or somewhere readily accessible for a firefighter or emergency responder. Taking a look inside of the switch, we have two contacts. There is a green contact that is normally open and a red contact that is normally closed. So in this case, wiring it to the inverter, whenever you press the emergency stop button and it initiates this contact, it is breaking the flow of power flowing through this contact. That way the signal to the inverter is interrupted and it can initiate the shutdown procedure. For demonstration purposes today, I have a couple of small wires just running from the switch, but the key thing to note is this little red jumper here on the circuit board inside of the inverter. This is our normal loop, and right now the way it's set up is the inverter will always operate. However, we can take this loop out just by depressing the little uh, buttons above and the wire just slides right out. And now, instead of this jumper, we can use our switch to complete the loop. To make this feature work, we need to plug in our cable into the CAN bus port of the battery, and the other end of the cable goes into the BATCOM port. Now again, just for demonstration purposes, these wires are going through the front of the inverter. Obviously, you would want to run them alongside your battery cabling, not through the front door. At this point, all of our setup is complete, and if I actually press the button, it initiates the shutdown on the inverter, and six seconds later or so, the breaker will turn off. And what's really cool about this is now all of our DC cabling and all of the wiring to the inverter will be completely turned off and safe. So there is no risk anymore for electrocution for a first responder. Now this definitely doesn't take place of an off switch because if you look, the battery is currently in an alarm mode and simply resetting the button won't turn this breaker back on. So this is definitely for emergency situations where manual resetting is necessary. All we need to do is first reset the emergency stop button, then we can power off the battery, and at this point we can turn the circuit breakers back on, power the batteries back on, and the system will reboot. This next section is for non-EG4 inverters. I've taken a piece of CAT6 cable and I have cut short and taped up all but the green and green with white stripe conductors. As you can see, I have untwisted them and I have the end stripped back about half an inch. Now the polarity here doesn't really matter, but what we wanna make sure of is that we're on the green contact. So I'm gonna put one wire on this terminal and one wire on that terminal. I like CAT6 cable on this because the strands are a little bit thicker and that makes it easier to put into these terminals. With that connected onto the green contact, we can put the lid on and screw it down. Now I have a very short cable here. This can be quite a bit longer depending on where you need to mount your switch. This time, instead of going into the CAN bus port, we're going to go into the battery COM port. And it doesn't matter which port. And this will be either on like your first or last battery because the batteries in the middle will already have these ports in use. It doesn't matter which port it is, as long as it's one of the available battery COM ports. With this all wired up, we can turn the battery on. And as soon as it boots up, we're actually ready to test this. It doesn't actually require anything to do with the inverter at this point. We can hit the button and just a couple seconds later, the breaker turns off. 
That about sums it up. We've showed you how to set this up with EG4 inverters using CAN bus communication, as well as for non-EG4 inverters wiring the shutdown signal to the battery directly. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll be here for the next one. We'll see you then.